it's big data day here uh, at Rackspace. We're meeting with a lot of companies. We're speaking at the Strata conference here in San Francisco. And, uh, you know, I, I'm interested in this age of context where we're really going to collect a lot more data and have to make use of that in our companies. And today we're talking to Action about uh, all that. And we'll, we'll get into it. Big data, Action, right now. Who are you? Hi, Robert. I, I'm Mike Hoskins. I'm the CTO of Actian. Uh, I've been wrangling data since forever, more than 30 years in software infrastructure, data integration, databases, data management, BI, data warehousing, and now data analytics. Uh, so I've been living and breathing data for a long time and uh, have arrived at the pinnacle, big data and analytics. And yeah. I'm CTO of Actian, driving a lot of that vision at Actian. Well, I just finished a book uh, called Age of Context. and. Uh, you know, we're getting sensors on us that are collecting data. A new Ford car collects 200 megabytes a second, I think, of data off of its sensors and mm -hmm. whatever else is going on. Uh, and, and wearable computers and uh, social network data and lo location data and then all the other data that a, a business collects, you know, mm -hmm. at, at point of sale or whatever. What, what are you seeing? You know, you've been in this business for a long time, and you mostly deal with enterprises, right? Yeah, we, we have companies all across the spectrum. Yeah. If they have a lot of data and they're trying to get value out of that data, then they're our, our customer or our potential customer. So in my speeches, I call this the age of data. We are basically instrumenting the universe. Every dumb object is becoming a smart object. Yeah, and, even and railroads, right? Yeah, it, Union Pacific is putting sensors under, in the rails, right? Fascinating story. I read that as a cover story in a magazine recently. So yeah, how do you know when a wheel is out of round and you need to replace it? Well, before the age of data, you sort of had your grisly, wizened experts, and they'd probably walk around with a crowbar at midnight and go, dong, dong. Well, it sounds like that wheel needs repairing. And, and that's sort of driven by human intuition, how we made decisions for centuries, millennia. Well, the age of data is gonna change everything. Uh, and so they're instrumenting their track every couple hundred meters. They're putting a sensor device that's listening to the wheel. Of course, they're grabbing data over time and they can therefore measure patterns about the change in the sound of the wheel, the speed, the vibration. And just like a modern jet engine, just like a car, all that data gets fanned in, collected back to some central power, and they begin to run some science, some analytics on that, so they can discover more accurately and in a more timely fashion what's going to happen to the way. They're, they're trying to predict the future. I mean, this is, yeah. this is why this age is important. You know, in our lifetime, we're living in a transition from an analog universe to a digital universe. We're moving from the art of decision-making to the science of decision-making, and we're going to be able to not perfectly, but with ever improving accuracy, predict the future. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Per certainly with humans, because if you follow, if I follow you around for a month, I know what where you go for lunch. I know if you go to church on Sunday. I know if you if you go to school. I know where you work. I know your favorite gas stations, right? And it's probably one or two, and, and on and on. And so I can start predicting what you're going to do tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, scary <laughs> thought. Are they watching? No. Oh, they are. <laughs> and increasingly, they're going to watch us more and more, right? In yeah, fact, a funny story. I just spoke at a privacy conference, and uh, they were arguing over what's the sign, the sign that they're going to have to put on the front of stores that are smart stores where the sensors in the store are watching everything you do. What, you know, and, and we can go into depth about that. Yeah. But, but anyway, so we that's, have a lot of data that's coming to us in the future. Yeah, and it's, it's I think people don't appreciate yet how violent the change is going to be. You know, think of, of uh, Walmart, a giant company, successful company collecting business transactions. It took them 60 years to get to hundreds of terabytes in their data warehouse. Uh, Facebook and these kinds of entities produce that in a week. Now. Yeah. You know, and, and I visited a large bank the other day. They produced that in a couple of hours from their network infrastructure. They have hundreds and thousands of routers and firewalls. Each one of them is spitting out log files. The log files are becoming more granular every day. They're recording more metrics out of more sensors at ever finer degrees of granularity. And so, so yeah, the, the, the sheer complexity and scale of those data feeds is going to overwhelm uh, and, and make obsolete uh, huge chunks of the software industry, in, yeah. in my opinion. Is Larry Ellison in trouble? Uh, well, I'm not going to pick a fight with Larry Ellison in <laughs> oh, San <come> Francisco. <laughs> uh, but he runs Oracle, right? Of course. And of course. Oracle used to run the world. Uh, and, and you know what? 
the, the times are changing. We are in a yeah. highly disruptive period right now between the, the last 30 years and the next 30 years, and they're not going to be the same. And new winners are going to emerge. And of course, software is a very sticky product, and, and software companies are very well entrenched in their installed base. But it's not an accident that many of the traditional software players have had challenges in the last you know, six quarters, seven quarters, eight quarters, you look yeah. at the financial results, it's look at Cisco, the world has changed. Look at HP, look at Microsoft. Look at IBM's results, look at Teradata's results, yeah. and, and it's hard to win new customers with that traditional model. I mean, think of this. Imagine you're a big customer of Exadata, Oracle, or Teradata, or any of these, and you're paying per terabyte for this, and your data volumes are not going to go up 10% next year. You know, they're going to go up hundreds and thousands of percent over the next year. What, you know, you're going to need big wallet to deal with big data. It's just, there's no answer. I think it's a death march. I think certain current technologies are simply not going to offer uh, economical scaling in the age of data. And it's an exciting period, frankly. Look at uh, innovations like Hadoop, just sort of came out of left field. Yeah. And I can't go to a company where I don't find Hadoop installed and they're kicking the tires uh, and trying to find out it, what's going on. I, I toured a data center down in Las Vegas and uh, eBay had 20,000 node, 20,000 know, servers all running Hadoop, right? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's just sort of happened, you know? And because there's no official owner in the classic sense and no massive marketing budget, you don't get the constant press releases about how massive the adoption is. But I think it's it's a huge story. This The software landscape is changing in so many ways. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it speaks to an opportunity for vendors like Actian. You know, we're really making a bet that this is a discontinuous break past. Well, that's why I invited you, because I think you're a Rackspace customer. If I we, we are a Rackspace customer, actually. We're a, a Texas-based uh, company. We got Austin office. Uh, headquarters are here in California, but big office in Austin. We're just down the, the road from San Antonio. We know the people well. And yeah, we run one of our next generation, in fact, world's fastest columnar analytic databases uh, hosted on Rackspace. So we, we like that. We host on almost everybody, so we're a big AWS customer. Our, our Actian Data Cloud is an elastic data cloud running on AWS and Azure, but we also host on uh, Well, on we're Rackspace. gonna have an announcement soon that you might change your mind on that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Anything you can tell me about? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not if I wanna keep my job. <laughs> okay. okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, but soon. Um, anyway, so what, what, what is it that you guys do? Like, okay, I, I think it, it's, Probably helpful, so we're a giant company yeah. in the software industry. We're almost 150 million in sales, probably one of the largest private software companies in the world. Uh, we have a very well-established enterprise database business yeah. uh, where we ship relational databases, embedded databases, object databases, uh, tens of thousands of customers all over the world, offices all over the world, 24 by seven support. So we're, we have extremely deep roots in the software industry and some of these roots go back 30 years. But, but the, the vision inside Actian right now is to develop a new generation of software for the two spaces that people are, are really worried about grappling with, and that's cloud computing and how do I integrate the internet uh, and big data and analytics. And so we've announced uh, just a few months ago uh, two major platforms to deal with those two problems. Uh, one, the Actian Data Cloud to deal with data ubiquity. You know, I read the other day that 10,000 new APIs were born on the internet last year. It's, it's like a, a Cambrian explosion of new life forms. Well, there's companies that just do APIs like MassShape, yes. right? They, it's a, they were here, right? Yeah. yeah. Good company, and there's yeah. several of them now. Just to do API management is yeah. terrible. So, so the the data integration problem that we've done for 30 years as a classic enterprise data integrator uh, is now gone crazy because you have all these endpoints born on the internet, and who's going to connect your Salesforce.coms and your Twitters and your new web uh, web services? That while we're having this conversation, there's probably 200 new APIs born on the internet, yeah. and so to try and address that problem, we decided. So this is seven years ago, so I think pretty insightful. We decided to lift our traditional data integration plumbing, which has all the connectors and all the engines and all the data quality pieces, and move it and build it, re-engineer it as a secure, elastic cloud of data services. Yeah. And so the Actium Data Cloud is, and I, I think we're the leader in this space, it's a very young space, but I can make that claim. Uh, the Actium Data Cloud is that secure, elastic cloud of data integration services. You can use it to connect to anything online. Uh, we wrote the world's first connector to salesforce.com. You can do Twitter feeds and Facebook connections and, and NetSuite and, and Intuit and QuickBooks. Uh, really a fabulous story, but we also have the full panoply 
of traditional connectors. We've got an agent that goes down behind the firewall, touches your back end ERP systems and your yeah. CRM systems, so you can do cloud to cloud, on-prem to on-prem hybrid integration. Well, it's the modern corporation, right? If, if you uh, hit a company of any scale, they've done you know dozens or hundreds of acquisitions, and they got a hodgepodge of things you know yeah. all over the place and you have to bring those into one place so a CEO can say hey <laughs> run yes. it from his computer otherwise you have to you know it, you, you don't have anybody working together right I know and data integration is that that sort of really crucial backbone technology uh, to make that available you, you can I've read CIO surveys for 25 years top five headaches and data integration is up there every year and it will never go away now it's exacerbated by the explosion of, of the internet and cloud-based endpoints. Yeah. So that Actia Data Cloud is, is already a hefty business. We have thousands of customers running on that. Uh, we, we process millions and millions of data integrations uh, every month. And let me give you an example. If you're a Salesforce customer or an Intuit customer running QuickBooks, so kind of your front office, back office stuff, and you'd like to get them integrated, you know, data integration has traditionally been a kind of a nasty, ugly business. You know, yeah. there'd, there'd be some services involved and some data mapping and some semantic. Just alone, it sounds like the kind of thing you need 20 consultants. <laughs> you know? and, the, and the consultant for a year. <laughs> and you better have a million dollars. So uh, <laughs> it is, and I'm a little embarrassed to say this because I've been in this space for a long time, but I can confess honestly, it's a pretty ugly experience. Yeah. But we have a new concept called invisible integration which takes the pain away. So if you're an Intuit customer and you want to connect your, your QuickBooks online or on-prem to salesforce.com, you know how much it takes to do it? You type in, here's my QuickBooks login, here's my Salesforce login, click. That's the way it should work. Exactly. And, and, that, is and that is a sophisticated, bi-directional, multi-master data integration with hundreds of business rules all happening automatically, all behind the scenes, all on the Actian data cloud. And we're now marching through the the software industry telling them that story that there is now an opportunity for you to go from painful integration to invisible integration using the Actian data cloud. How, how many different uh, things are joined together? Endpoints, we have, I don't know the count, but it's in the hundreds and hundreds of connectors that we can sort of offer. A lot of code offer. There. The, a lot, There's hundreds of man years of deep technology. How much does that cost to put in a company? Uh, it depends on, I, I'm the CTO, I can't answer that question. Yeah. Uh, but we have a, a model that's really attractive for our partners. So try, instead of trying to win the customers one by one, we go right to the software industry and talk to people like Salesforce and NetSuite and Intuit. Yeah. So Intuit happens to be our OEM customer there. Ah, okay. And they don't, on their website, say, ah, we use Actian, though they do. And so Intuit offers instant on integration to Salesforce.com, but it's all powered by us. Got it. We do a four cloud backend integration. Really, I think it is this most impressive data integration achievement I've seen in the market in the last couple of years. And, and we, have, we have a multi-year lead. I, other people can't do this. And so, yeah, I, I'm pretty bullish. I, I think it has a role to play uh, with, uh, with the uh, high context data story you were telling earlier. Yeah. So imagine that. No, they, they, I, I, I tell people that, you know, I was at the Ritz last night. They have four computer systems at the Ritz that run just a little hotel, right? Yes. Just a single one. Uh, they don't talk to each other. <laughs> They don't, and by the way, they don't talk to Facebook. They don't right. talk to Twitter. They don't talk to Foursquare. I've checked in on Foursquare 260 times. Has anybody ever, an employee, ever mentioned that? No. no. Because they so, don't know the data. They don't, the data's not connected. That's right. And you could argue that the breakthroughs in contextual computing are only going to come when people move beyond their own silo of data. Uh, let me give you an example. We have a, uh, one of our customers for the data cloud uh, is a company called Point Inside, and they do sort of point of sales, customer interaction software for large companies like Lowe's. Uh, and they've used our integration plumbing to offer a high context experience to the shopper in Lowe's because it knows by location where they are, it knows their purchase record from point of sale, it knows that yesterday they bought some paint and maybe they want to look at some brushes. And so, so that's exactly what you're talking about. It, but, but I think in some ways we're only at the very early stages of that because you're, you're sort of trapped. Absolutely. You can only do high, as you pointed out, you can only get high context benefits from the silo of data of that vendor. And, and what they really need to do is realize that you also closed a mortgage yesterday through an online mortgage company, but that's a data silo over here. Yeah. Think of the context you could deliver to a customer, the richer experience, if you had genuine cloud-based data integration that could wire in 
and break through the data silos and pull that I, data together. So much of research. My guess is five to ten years away. Yeah. Are you thinking? No. I, I mean, I mean, if the Ritz doesn't do it, nobody yes. does it, right? Because <laughs> because the Ritz is the high service value leader in the hotel world, right? And, yeah. and if they ain't doing it, nobody's. Doing it. Well, Four Seasons a little ahead of them, but <laughs> you'd be shocked how primitive data integration infrastructure is. So yeah, we're in in year one, day one of, a, of an almost endless runway of opportunity. You can see why Actian is, is really making the heavy investments in this space. Yeah. The, the data cloud gives us, and therefore our Ritz, Ritz, call us, uh, gives us uh, that opportunity to start tying together data feeds and enriching the, the It's not just experience. the Ritz, it's, a, it's your General Motors car, it's your going to Disneyland, right? Uh, now Disney is making a lot of investments. They put a little band on you with yes. RFID, and they're, they, they, they're tracking you as you walk around. They know right? who you are. And they have a lot of data, but they don't know. But like, it's only their own data still. Yeah. They're living in their own data silo. Yeah. What if they could get you know, some, a fabric of integration that would allow them to go ping, ping, touch social media feeds and Twitter feeds and Facebook and other transactions account and what you bought on Amazon. Now, data privacy and, and selfishness and sort of silo grabbing is, is going to be the friction in this process. Uh, but inevitably, because nobody's going to own all the data. Google? No, I don't think so. So nobody's going to own all the data. They so have a lot. <laughs> they have a lot. <laughs> and they're collecting it fast. And, and so clearly there are some titans in the space. But yeah. it, at the end of the day, you must solve the data integration problem elastically, online, on demand, for what? high context computing to prevail. Before the cameras talk, turn on, you, you talked to me about a pipeline of, uh, well, you, you talk about data like a refinery. Yeah. You know, oil comes in one That's, side, and then there's a lot of pipes, and then gasoline and jet fuel come out yeah, the other it's, side. Right? It, it's, uh, I actually had, at, at the Ritz, I, that one day I met a guy who actually runs a refinery. It's amazing uh, what it does, you know, yeah. and how many miles of pipe there are. It's complex. We know that. We're, we're in Texas, so, uh, so I love uh, that idea of data as the new oil. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you that, that, that story. Let, let me step back a minute to give you the context. Uh, uh, so, so the Actian Data Cloud is sort of our new platform, next generation technology, to, to integrate the internet. Uh, the other large problem that we see is, is independent of integrating and collecting data feeds, uh, the opportunities. So this is a really big transition that's going on in software that I talk about. We don't hear, I think, enough about it. We've spent 30 years in what I would call the operational world and operational systems and our, our accounting systems and our payroll systems and our transaction systems. And they continue to operate and go. But as we instrument the universe, as every object gets sensors and starts spitting out transactions and observations and, and interactions, I have a new opportunity to do analytic workloads that are above and beyond the operational workloads. Yeah. And I think the turrets are going to turn now inside businesses towards the ability to, to collect and capture the, the digital data events that are being born in their business systems and their social systems and their machine generated systems and somehow capture and assemble these into a single place. because. It's, it's raw data, but there's gold in there somewhere. There's analytic value. Not, not just looking backwards and how many widgets did I sell to left-handed people in Wisconsin, but, but looking forward and, and, and mining. It's a beautiful phrase, data. Mining that data for the inherent patterns that are not yet discovered or known that could be highly relevant to your business. We're starting to see companies that are doing this. Uh, uh, Tap and Go was here. And most people don't know Tap and Go because it's only for college kids right now and only for small numbers, uh, 20, it's like Facebook in the early days. I, I've seen this pattern before, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, how did Facebook happen? It started at Harvard, right? Mm -hmm. And any, everybody at Harvard knew it was important, but nobody else did. And, I, and anyways, tap, tap and go, um, a, a college kid gets up and, and buys everything on their phone, right? right? Buys their coffee, buys their sandwich, uh, gets their laundry cleaned, everything they do off of tap and go. And it's actually stalking him, it's following you around. And eventually, it, it, really quickly, it starts asking questions. Would you like your normal iced latte this morning? Right. It's like, oh, how did it? Oh, yeah, I bought iced lattes for the last five days. I guess I'm going to buy an iced latte today, too. OK. And it sends that order into the, into the coffee maker. And mm -hmm. by the time you get to the coffee shop, they have it made. Mm. And so that, this is a new kind of business. But I think this is going to be how all business runs. It is. Uh, it is. And th this, this is. Now, we're in the early days of this space yeah. as well. This will be a 10-year pattern, 15-year pattern. Easily. Right? easily. But think of the, of the inherent power, so, but the challenge. So, so, so speaking about the Actian platform, by the way, we call this our Paracel. It's like parallel acceleration. We're all about next generation, massively parallel and scalable software. 
And so what we've done at Actium, through a series of acquisitions and some homegrown uh, work, is assembled an end-to-end -end portfolio to help people build a new generation of these analytic workloads. Think of it as a pipeline. Pipeline's a powerful idea. And so this is where I, I was explaining to you, if, if data is the new oil, and it, that speaks to how valuable data is. Yeah. But think about what happens to oil. It, it, it comes in as crude oil, it lands in storage tanks, it lands, and then it gets put through a series of, of refining steps. We process it, and we take that crude oil and we turn it into high value downstream products that might be distillates or chemicals or jet fuel or whatever. Well, that's what I think is going to happen in the age of data. I like this analogy too because data to me is streams. You know, it, Twitter on my screen is constantly right. moving because it, it's a stream of data. It's not a file anymore. I, you know, not. when I grew up with Microsoft Windows, I always thought of data as a file, like an Excel spreadsheet. Right. No, not anymore. I'm glad <laughs> it's a stream, stream of data, and, and doing this kind of step of processing makes a lot of mental sense to me. Yeah, we call these data flows. And if yeah. you want to remember something from this conversation, uh, so, so we've pioneered in that area. We have the world's fastest, most scalable parallel data flow engine. But data flows are an important way to think about the next 30 years. If data is born digitally and flows constantly, so your, your static architectures are dead, the idea that you can wait two days, collect your data, load it in your data warehouse, give people information that's two days or two hours old, over, it's finished. Yeah. And so, so crude data is streaming at us, it needs to land someplace as well. Maybe HDFS is the storage tank. You know, and so we have crude data and it needs to be pushed through a pipe, flowed through a pipeline to its highest analytic value. We have to turn crude raw data into high value information products. Yeah. And so that's a pipelining process. And so the, the strategy, and now the successful strategy, was to acquire and build an end-to-end -end portfolio of pieces. Let me take you through the pieces. I have to be able to have fan-in collection frameworks yeah. to pull the data from n number of sources. A yeah. classic data integration pattern. Yeah. Now the data has landed at the front of my pipe in its crude form. I have to process it through ETL and transformation. What's and, ETL for people uh, that don't Extract, understand? transform, and load. It's, it's, it's the classic phrase we use for turning a dirty data into clean data. So very much like crude oil gets you know, turned yeah. into sort of light, sweet, crude so that it can go further down the pipeline and be processed. And so, yeah, we're taking that data and we're parsing it and transforming it, enriching it, cleansing it, deduping it maybe geocoding it, maybe doing some pre-computes, some aggregates, making it ready for its downstream higher value purpose. When you get towards the end of the pipe, you're starting to, to ask new questions. And this is why people are excited about advanced analytics and data science. It's not just, you know, what did I do yesterday? But if I actually had all the information, think of a wearable again, think of yeah. contextual community, think of a pacemaker in 10 years. It won't just be a dumb device, it'll be a sensor device. Yeah. And it'll be broadcasting, not just helping you, but it'll be broadcasting your blood sugar and your temperature and your uh, blood pressure all I, the time. I know a guy building a saliva sensor that's gonna know that you're gonna have a heart attack 24 hours in advance. Beautiful, that's yeah. the story that I tell. This is why advanced analytics, data science, machine learning, predictive analytics is really the sharp tip of the arrow down here. I want to be able to do every kind of query that I've done, but what do I do when it's 50 terabytes? You know, like I said to you earlier, we, we, we helped a customer the other day turn a 30-hour query into a 30-second query because we have the world's fastest columnar analytic databases. And that's where data should live if you want to do ad hoc query in the age of data. But it's not just about sort of traditional kind of querying. We want to do these advanced machine learning techniques. We want to build recommender systems. We want to find when that train wheel is going to fail. I want to know when my air condition... I live in Texas. Two August ago, my AC failed. You know, it's hot. <laughs> I'd like an email three weeks before saying, your AC is gonna fail. Yeah. How do we know that? Because every motor in there is a sensor device, and we collect that information, we send it to Bosch in Germany or whoever makes the motors, and they've got it from all the motors in the world, and they're able to run predictive models and science on that and say, aha, when these kinds of patterns happen, typically with some predictive power, this happens. And that's, I think, the second stage of the high context revolution. So context is not only going to be about helping me uh, integrate and aggregate data feeds from multiple places and therefore I have a richer experience of facts. Yeah. It's also going to then have studied those facts across large time windows and be able to make predictions like I'm going to have a heart attack you know, in the next 30 minutes which is much better than the state of the art now. Yep. And so yeah, I, th I think predictive and analytic pipelines 
are going to be driving a lot of our experience. It's really going to change how, both as consumers and businesses, we make decisions. Now you meet with a lot of com companies, uh, you know, from small startups to, uh, you know, we talked about some startups that you can't name, but pre pretty cool ones, all the way up to big ones. What 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 does the average business person, you know, CTO need to do in the next year that, that they're not yet doing or, or you know, wake up or what, what kind of teams do they need to rebuild? Or, it's a great question. I, you know, I, in that uh, space, we're even thinking about, you know, rebuilding our board to get ready for the next world, you know, that's coming yeah. at us really fast. So I would say th this, so we're talking about big data and analytics. I, you know, in the early days, it was about just big data. It was kind of a testosterone contest. Well, my data is bigger than your data. Is. I got six petabytes in the right. parking lot. <laughs> that's a, by the way, the Bing, Bing mapping team has six petabytes in their parking lot. Oh, do they? Okay. <laughs> in a trailer. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting how much data you have. Of course, many sources and you're integrating it. But it's the value you can get out of that data. So, so I'm happy to have seen it become big data and analytics. I personally think the, the pendulum is going to swing towards the analytic workloads. And, I, and, and at the end of the day, and if you're listening, what should you do about it? You should think about how to bring a new generation of analytic science into your operational flows. And I think it's pretty easy to do. Uh, data mining and, and advanced predictive analytics has been around for, you know, actuarial science, uh, credit scores. These are predictive models. You know, when are you going to die? It's, insurance companies would really like to know that with with better accuracy all the time. And are you gonna pay your mortgage? Are you gonna pay your credit card? I mean, that's really what a credit score is. And so, and so we've had predictive models in key parts of our business, but they're going to participate in every part of our business. You know, do I turn left? Do I turn right? Should I hire the guy? How should I price my product at 2.30 p.m. this afternoon? What ads should I show? You wanna talk about contextual computing? We have a couple of customers who are huge digital media players. I mean, the biggest in the world and they use our advanced analytic pipelines to be able to recontextualize the ads that are served. I and mean, that's really what ad optimization is. It's understanding who you are in that moment that would make this or that ad more relevant to you. And so we've got a, a huge digital media company that, that builds those little bots that are out there watching behavior and constantly refreshing the behavior of the bot to try and improve your experience. Yeah. And I think that's, for people listening, think about the data you already have, the business transactions, the increasingly new internet and machine generated data sets, and think about an infrastructure to build discovery and analytic pipelines, to understand your data, to find the patterns in there that are important, and to draw, and find, and this is the, the holy grail, is to, to be able to assemble that data, analyze it, and build a predictive model that allows you to act in a more timely and accurate way than you were yesterday. Yeah. And it's incremental, there's no magic, but the data and the data, so m running data mining and machine learning on mountains of machine generated data sounds a bit geeky and techy, and it is, but that's where the, the, the opportunity is in business, I think. Absolutely. Where do we learn more about you guys? Pardon? Where, where, where do I learn more about Actian? Uh, so you can come to our website, uh, www.actian.com. Uh, next week is an important week for us. Uh, Strata and Hadoop World in New York is taking place. Uh, Hortonworks just announced the Hortonworks uh, data platform, HDP 2.0. Uh, that's important because Yarn is a new building block. So Horton, uh, Apache and Hadoop are, are beautiful, but like a lot of beautiful things, they're very young and immature, and they need improvements and milestones and plateaus. And so people like our partner Hortonworks and Actian are working to improve that. So I'd invite you to to watch what's going on there. I think Yarn is going to open up the world of Hadoop to vastly superior next generation technologies like our Dataflow engine, uh, like our columnar analytic databases, uh, those being able to execute natively in Hadoop. No MapReduce, think of that. Uh, no, no programming in MapReduce, no latencies and slow. And, and so being able to t adopt Actian technology uh, as, as you'll see next week in the New York show is really gonna change your Hadoop experience. It's going to make your design time experience uh, dramatically better and your runtime performance dramatically better. So I, uh, look for us there and, and look for us in these kinds of data cloud and big data uh, events and opportunities in the future. Cool. Thank you so much. Sure, my pleasure.